In this lesson, we're going to take a look at being able to identify specific aspects of an image and in turn be able to uh, identify what is present and also identify the color and the number of, of components of that shape and color that are available. And so what we're going to do is we're going to analyze a image that contains a number of dots that are of various colors. And the colors that are represented are red, black, green, and blue. And so we'll use this as a, a way to understanding, understand how we can correlate each one of those those shapes and count them in MATLAB. And so the first thing that we want to do is we'll upload the, or we'll, um, we'll read in the image of question. And the image that we're going to use is the dot pattern PNG file. And so that should be in your working, direct, right, working directory. So it is here, has a width of 794 and a height of 1,123. And so what we want to do now is let's count um, the number of uh, red dots. And so within this image, we're going to create a new variable. And so for this, we want to identify at the, at the color level for RGB, whether a component is greater than 128 for the red and less than 128 for blue and less than 128 for B. And this means that if it's less than those, then the majority of that specific attribute is going to be red. And so in this case, we're able to identify it and we're going to determine the uh, the pixels that are in a circle. And so we're going to provide for a summation of those values. And so here we use M to provide the sum. And then next, what we want to do is denote the number of circles. And so we'll say pixels per circle over the pixels per circle floored. And that is going to give us the number of red circles that we have available. And we can look at first glance and we know that the answer should be one. So that enables us to identify the number of red circles available. And so next, what we can do is we can turn a turn the a 2D mask into a 3D mask for each of the RGB layers. And so we'll have our red layer, our green layer, layer and our blue layer. And we're going to apply that appropriate mask. And then what we want to do is display our chosen pixels for that mask. And so in this case, it's going to be the red value that is displayed. And it is the only value displayed. All of these other values would have been the black, green, and blue values. And so now what we can do is we can take the same approach as well for counting uh, blue circles. And so what we want to do is consider the value for our image and our image components. And so we will basically go through and create a mask. And so we want values that are less than 128 in the red layer, less than 128 in the green layer, and greater than 128 in the, in the blue layer. And so you want to keep in mind that we're denoting that the, if the value is less than 128 and blue is greater than 128, then that means that we're going to have a majority of the pixels for that component to be blue because blue is the dominant, um, dominant layer. And so now what we want to do is provide a summation of the blue circles that are available. And so what we'll do is we'll sum M to represent uh, each one that is present within our image. And then we'll use our floor function to calculate blue pixels over pixels per circle. 
and that is going to give us a value of eight. And if we look back at our, our original image, we can count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blue circles that are present. And so now we can apply the mask to the image for our blue circles. And what we want to do to display the image, we're going to use our mask and set it equal to 255 for the values that are not. And here we're able to show that um, all of our blue pixels only in our image. And so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so next we can utilize the same approach in order to count the number of green circles that are present. And so in order to accomplish this, what we'll have is, again, we'll apply our mask and for the, the colors that are not of interest, we're gonna set the mask to be for the values that are less than 128 for red and less than 128 for blue. And for green, we want the values that are greater than 128. Again, this is keeping in mind that we want to have uh, the, green, the green pixels and the green pixels should be the dominant pixel of interest. And so we will sum up those values and then we'll do a calculation to get the number of green circles. And so we'll say green pixels divided by the pixels per circle. And that is going to give us our one value. So if I want to display that. So that says that we'll have a number of green circles to be five. And if we go to our original image, we can see on row, row five, we have two, row six, one, row eight, one, and row 11, um, one. Or actually, this is row nine, this is row seven, and this is row six. So one, two, three, four, five circles in total that are green. So we will apply our mask that we created here to each layer for red, green, and blue. And then we use our, the opposite of our mask to set the, our desired pixels. And now we're able to display only the green pixels that we have. So essentially, we can do the same thing for black circles too. And in this case, we want values where, where all of the values are less than 128. And so we would sum it appropriately as well here. And then we want to calculate the black pixels, the number of black circles. And so we say black pixels divided by pixels per circle. And that is gonna give us a value of 86. And so by far, the black circles were the dominant number within our image. We can continue by applying the mask to each of our layers. So we'll have a mask for M for red, green, and blue. And now we want to display that image and we're able to display the, um, the image containing only the black circles, thanks to our masking. And so we can also provide our appropriate statistics for, for each of our circles. And so we can print, print out the dot summary using the fprintf command, and we'll print out the number of red circles, the number of green circles, as well as the number of of blue circles and the number of black circles. And so if we wanted to plot the values, then we are able to do that too. And so we'll plot the number of red circles, the number of green circles, and the number of blue circles. And so we'll have our indices set 
to go for a number of dots. And then we'll have our, for the, for the Y label, and then for the X label, we'll do color by number. And then we titled this plot to be number of dots by color. And so we can use, we can keep our grid on and we'll have a axis that consists of 0, 5, 0, 10. And so we're able to plot the number of red, green, and blue dots appropriately. So we have one red that is out outlined here. And then we have our green, which is five, and our blue dots, that's eight as well. So this al allows for us to demonstrate how we can do a number of calculations using uh, using mass to identify the color at each layer in MATLAB. And then we're also able to apply plot by using the plot command. And it allows for us to make use of our two-dimensional plane for plotting the data in our Y axis versus our X axis. And it's important to keep in mind when you're using plot that the the number uh, the number of elements in each vector must be the same when you're doing a y versus x plot. And so there are various ways in which you can do the plot. And in this case, we've created one denoting denoting our values for number of circles. Uh, number of red circles, number of green circles, and number of blue circles.